Hey everyone, Graham here from the recordingrevolution.com. Got a good video for you guys on some fundamentals uh, in the DAW. If you're brand new to recording, brand new to mixing, or maybe you've been doing this as a hobby for a while, but you've never really figured out what the proper bit depth or sample rate you're supposed to record and mix at is, or uh, maybe you've just chosen some settings at random and working fine and you're not really sure if it makes a difference, or maybe you like to just enter into endless, pointless debates on internet forums about the benefits or lack thereof of certain bit depth and sample rates. Well, this video might be for you. It's gonna be very basic, very simple, as most of mine are. I'm gonna get right to the point. And I'm gonna show this to you in Pro Tools, but please, if you are not a Pro Tools user, do not tune out. I, I will just basically be teaching you the concepts, and Pro Tools will just happen to be the example platform that I'm using, okay? So this applies to just about every single piece of recording or mixing software out there today. So what is the point? When you create a new session or a new project file, whatever your DAW calls it, you're about to record something new for your band or mix something for a client. Generally, when you're creating the session for the first time, it's going to ask you what bit depth and what sample rate you want to record at. Okay, so here in Pro Tools, I've got the Create Blank Session selected because I want to start from scratch and record a new song. And the two key things I'm looking at here are bit depth and this drop-down menu for sample rate. What do they do, why does it matter, and what should they be set at? The bit depth that you record at is determined by not your software necessarily, but ultimately by your audio interface, that box that you bought, your USB, Firewire, Thunderbolt, PCI interface, whatever it is, that box that you plug in your microphones into and your, uh, you plug your guitars into and your line instruments into and that hooks into your computer. That's what your software is looking for. That has the converter. That's what actually converts your analog audio flowing through your mic cable into a digital signal to flow across your USB cable. And this little dialog box or something similar is just asking you, do you want to record at 24 or 16 bit? Ignore the 32 for a moment. Your box is either going to give you only 16-bit or up to 24-bit capabilities. If your box can't do 24-bit, then this, this doesn't really matter. You can only do 16-bit anyway. But this is 2013 as I speak, and just about every off-the-shelf audio interface can record a 24-bit, which is wonderful. What does that mean? The more bits, the more headroom. What is headroom? Well, headroom is the ability to uh, continue to record hot signals that peak, and you're not going to hit clipping. You have more space, you have more wiggle room with your audio. So if you have a very dynamic source and it's kind of quiet and then it jumps, it's got room for to spike, okay? And the beauty of 24-bit versus 16-bit is just that you can have a much quieter noise floor. You can record at nice conservative levels and you're gonna have a nice full signal. You don't have to maximize the bits. That's just sort of a, uh, an antiquated idea that you have to record as close to clipping as possible so that you're above the, you know, the hiss or the tape noise or those things. Digitally, you don't really have that problem. And 24-bit just simply gives you more of that wiggle room in case you do record a bit too hot and it allows you to record nice, clean, full audio without the worrying about clipping, okay? Especially if you record at levels that I suggest, check out some of my other videos for that. So this decision should be very simple. 16-bit is good, 24-bit is better, and you wanna work at 24 bits if at all possible. I just mixed a song for a band that recorded at 16 bits. I don't think they realized they did that. And they recorded very well. They had proper gain staging nothing clipped, and I got a good mix out of it, okay? A lot of great great hits in the 90s were recorded at 16-bit digital, okay? 16-bit is totally usable. I'm just saying 24-bit is right there, and it's a much better way to work. It's a much safer way to work for headroom purposes. So for most people out there, just choose 24-bit and move on. The Pro Tools guys, the 32-bit float, keep in mind this is an irrelevant setting when you're recording, because no audio interface that I know of on the market right now can record at 32 bits. So you're not creating 32-bit audio 
when you select this bit depth, okay? The DAW processes things at 32-bit floating point anyway, always has, at least Pro Tools LE, the native version. Nothing new here. It's sort of a misnomer, especially when you're setting up a session for recording purposes. It can be beneficial somewhat in the mixing phase, and uh, I've addressed that in another video prior when Pro Tools 10 came out. But I'm going to disregard that for now because it's really sort of a Pro Tools-ism, um, and I never use it. And most people are going to be satisfied with 24-bit, and that's all you need, honestly, to have plenty of headroom in your DAW. Sample rate is probably the more controversial one and where more opinions lie. Sample rate is easily uh, described like frame rate if you're into video, okay? And if you're not into video, it's still pretty easy to figure this out. What is the frame rate of a movie? It's how many snapshots, how many still pictures are taken per second to make it look like a moving image. So you could have 24 frames per second. So every second, the video camera has taken 24 pictures, which is amazing. And that's what allows all the still pictures to look like a moving picture. Um, 30 frames per second is even better. 60 frames per second is super fluid. It's going to look super real. You're capturing more information in that second, right? So sample rate is the equivalent in audio. It's how many um, snapshots of the audio wave are taken in a second, okay? So you've got 44 Point 0.1 kilohertz, okay? That's gonna be your baseline for modern day audio, all the way up to some interfaces doing 192 and beyond. Obviously, the higher the sample rate, the more high quality, by definition, your digital picture is. So if I strum an acoustic guitar chord, those few seconds that it's strumming, if it's being captured at 44.1 kilohertz, then that's how many snapshots of that audio wave are recorded in digital format to represent that audio wave. If I record it at 88.2, it's capturing tw the twice as much information for the same guitar strum. So it's gonna be a smoother digital curve to represent the perfectly smooth analog curve. So it's gonna be more accurate, it's gonna be higher fidelity by definition, okay? Now let's keep something in mind. The higher the sample rate you record at, the more information you're capturing. That means the bigger your audio files will be, the more CPU power your computer will need to be able to do the same thing at a lower sample rate. Let's work backwards and figure out what sample rate matters for delivery, and this will give you sort of my opinion on where to land with sample rate. At the end of the day, in modern day music right now in 2013, a CD, okay, compact disc, I can't believe those still exist, but that's a very still a popular medium for delivery, go to a live show, you want to pick up someone's song, they have discs right there. That's that WAV file that exists on that CD, still a digital file, that is a 16-bit, okay, 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz file. That is your final delivery format for your masters for a CD as a WAV file. Same is true with an MP3. Even a high-quality, you know, 320 kilobits per second MP3 that file is going to be 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. So both digitally downloadable and digitally distributed on a hard copy disk, 16441 is the preferred format for actually getting to the consumer, playing on a consumer device. Now, I know iTunes and other places are allowing you to submit 24-bit files um, and maybe higher sample rates. You can let me know if that's true. Um, and they'll still deliver the consumer quality version, but they're holding a higher quality version because there's plenty of formats that in the future, if not now already, could deliver higher quality digital media. Um, and so this 16-bit 44.1 may not have to be the final resting place for our audio moving forward. And as some people are probably screaming right now, DVD or video audio is generally submitted at 48. Okay, so if you're ever recording or mixing for a movie or for picture, then 48 is the final delivery medium that'll have to be anyway. And so DVDs have, or Blu-rays have higher quality sound than CDs because technically it's a higher sample rate. Okay, so why does that matter? Well, what matters is that you're gonna end up on 44.1 16-bit, so why not record at 16-bit 44.1? And I would think you're, I would say you're almost there. Yes, I think 44.1 16-bit sounds very, very good, especially when done right. Like I said, this mix I did for a guy, the track was recorded at 16-bit 44.1 and I mixed it and it sounds very rich, very warm. It sounds just as good as anything I've done on higher sample rates or, or a higher bit depth. 
So I don't think that's a limitation really. The only caveat would be 24-bit is going to give you way more wiggle room for uh, clipping and transients and it even allows gain staging to be easier. I think 24-bit gives you the most uh, bang for your buck. And then in terms of sample rate, this is how I record and mix. 44.1 people, okay? Why do I not record or mix at higher sample rates? Okay, like 96. 96K is very popular, 24-bit. That's a really popular combination uh, for high-quality studios. Why not record it at that? Um, for me, it's a matter of I can't really notice much of a difference, not just when I'm recording and mixing at that sample rate, but when it's all filtered back down because it has to end up at 44.1 anyway. So as I'm recording and mixing at 96, I'm getting all these extra... Uh, snapshots of the audio and as allowing my plugins to process things in a super high quality way. I get that. I haven't been able to substantiate in a, just a tangible, real, everyday way like my ears or people that I know hear it and go, yes, it's way better of a mix because it was done in 96 because at the end of the day, I have to use a really good converter to convert back down to 44.1. So I lose all those samples anyway and it ends up at 44.1. To me, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. I don't think I can really tell much of a difference. That may say something more about me and my ears than it does about uh, whether it's a good move or not. Now, there are some guys out there that I know have super, super hearing, super crazy cool ears, and they love the high fidelity stuff, and they prefer to work at it, maybe just knowing that it's super high quality. Uh, but at the end of the day, it steals CPU power and it steals hard drive space for no real gain that I see in a real tangible everyday life. So this is the decision that I've come to is that I work at and I try to receive files at and I dumb down files to 24-bit, 44.1 to record and mix and master. And then when I'm finally ready to deliver the files for MP3 or a, a DDP file or CD for the duplication house, only thing I'll convert down to is 16 bits. It'll chop off those extra bits because the bits just help me have better gain staging, a little more wiggle room, and at, by that point in the song, I don't need those extra bits anyway. They just chop them off, and then I'm already working at 44.1, so nothing has to be converted. I know how my audio is going to sound. I've been hearing it at 44.1 the entire time, and if it doesn't sound good, then it's because I suck, not because of the sample rate. So that's the long answer to the short answer, which is I recommend you record a mix of 44.1, 24-bit. Feel free to experiment with anything higher. Please do. If you have an audio interface that allows you to go higher than 48 um, maybe up to 96 or something even higher. Do it. See if you can tell a difference. See if it makes a difference on your CPU. It may or may not. Um, but you will find everybody in a different camp on the internet about this. So you can go find people that disagree with me. You might disagree with me. That's totally cool. You're going to find people that are 88.2 uh, guys. You're going to find people that are 96K uh, girls. You're going to find people that swear by 192. Why would you do anything less than 192 if it's available to you? Okay, great logic on all sides. I don't really think I can prove them wrong or prove me right. I'm just telling you that if you want to make great music, you only have to understand sample rate and bit depth to a small degree, and this is the degree you need to work on it. So in summary, brand new session, whether it's Pro Tools, Logic, any other audio interface, any other DAW, anything you have, set up a 44.1, 24-bit file and go. And when you're all done, you're going to have to convert down to 16-bit to deliver for now. In the future, we might be able to keep everything at 24-bit, and we might even be able to work at higher sample rates. If the delivery medium goes up to uh, 96K is the preferred delivery medium, then definitely we'll start recording and mixing at 96K. No problem. Hope that helps everyone, all you beginners and advanced guys alike. If you have any questions, shoot me a message over at the website, and uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of discussion on this topic. It's a good one to have. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.